Hi friends, welcome. My name is Baron, and this is my channel where I talk about some book stuff. I'm the book Baron. Welcome in. So today we're talking about some books that I am prioritizing in the year 2024, the year of Satan. Not really, that was dark. I'm in quite the mood, so just a heads up. And also I'm still dealing with some voice loss. So hopefully my voice hangs in for this whole video. I have tea here just in case. I am prioritizing exactly 19 books this year. I know the trend is to do 24 books in 2024, but I put together that list and then immediately felt overwhelmed because I knew that there is going to be months or I know, I knew, speaking from the future, because I know that if I have to read two books from a list per month, it won't happen. I know myself. So I was like one or two books roughly per month. That seems achievable to me. So I ended up with 19. Plus I honestly just wanted to pick only the books that I really felt like by the end of the year, I will have read this book. Like I really am excited about these books. I really am prioritizing these books because honestly, I, initially I put together a, a list of 35 books, but I just knew that there were stuff on that list that I absolutely wouldn't get to despite being very excited about it. So I really tried to pick just the 19 I am absolutely the most excited about from my TBR. I'm really just trying to justify why I only picked 19 books. Look, don't judge me and you can't tell me what to do. That's why there's 19 books. Let's just get into some books. I'm gonna try and keep it short because there's 19 to talk about. First up, I have Tattered Bodies by Shay Ruby. This is the third book in the Broken series. It's following the same character, so you do have to read it in order. It follows a dark, toxic romance and it's got some like themes of mental health and addiction. And there's also like a crime component that kind of gets introduced, but I'll kind of explain that in a second. Because this follows the same couple throughout and you do have to read it in order, I don't want to tell you too much about this book in particular. But what I will say is that the first book, Shattered Hearts, follows Ali and Zane who are both in the process of spiraling out and they sort of become obsessed with each other and in their quest to spend as much time together because they know that they can't possibly stay together because they're both so just broken at this point. They really just try and cling to each other as much as possible and end up really hurting each other in the process. It's very emotionally dark. The second book takes a little bit of a different turn and it's a little bit more of the characters, although there's still romance in here in that book, it's a little bit more of the characters kind of focusing on themselves and either spiraling out further or trying to improve or some combo of the things. It's a little bit more like criminal crime dark. And then this one is <laughs> picking up after a nasty cliffhanger that was in book two. And we're in some deep, deep stuff. So I burned through the first two books in this series. I didn't pick up this book because at the time I was sort of in, on like a literary high. Is that is that the opposite of a, a reading song? That's what, let's call it that. But I wanted to read all the things all the time. Everything was hitting and I was like, Okay, I already know because in the reader group for Shea Ruby, everybody says this is their favorite book. So I was like, I know that this one's gonna be really, really good. So I did save it. <laughs> My nasty, nasty habit coming back to play. But I am absolutely going to read this in probably in the next couple of months because I wanna know what happens. Definitely one that I'm prioritizing and I will be reading very, very soon. Next up is one that I added actually a little bit more recently. It's Alter Arlo and this is by Nordica Knight. This is a standalone, it's a dark MM distillation utopian romance and it's got some mental health themes. So I will be honest from this synopsis it's one of those that it says a lot without saying too much and so there's four people mentioned I think so I don't know who the romance is really between but it doesn't really matter. Two guys apparently there is like this impending war but it's not really clear who is the enemy. It's this very post-apocalyptic world and there's three different communities that are kind of encompassed in this world. Kadak? I'm hazarding, I guess, that's his name. And Zaid are known for being kind of ruthless and dangerous, but they're forced to team up in order to basically survive. And it's a pretty tenuous alliance. So I'm assuming this is where the romance is. They also end up running into Arlo, who is like the most feared. And it says one is a stalker, one is a germaphobe, and one is a madman. So actually maybe that's three dudes. Is this an MMM? We'll find out. This just sounds so interesting because I used to really love reading dystopians. And so I was like, this seems kind of like something that's unique and I haven't read a lot of recently. So I really want to get to that one. Next up is Candy Coated Chaos. And this is by Charity B. So this is part of the Sweet Treat series. It follows the same couple throughout. This is the first book and it's like a dark 
dark romance and it's got some themes of like drug use and addiction. Heaven's happiness is kind of overshadowed by a lot of her dark secrets that she's sort of har harboring. But this is really what kind of pulls Alex in. He's really intrigued by kind of what's going on beyond the surface. So despite not really understanding all of Heaven's troubles, Alexander is really determined to get close to her and just develop a sense of trust. But Kevin, with her secrets, as the relationship deepens, really realizes that this is putting them in jeopardy and knows that this relationship just really can't last. So why am I prioritizing this? One, I love Charity V's writing. She does like a great job of developing her characters and taking time to do that and not in a way that feels slow or overwritten, but it just feels like her characters are very much whole people. And so then anytime they have emotions, like I just feel like I'm in it with them. And I know that Charity B is planning to revamp this series. So I do want to read it before the revamp happens and then maybe do a reread after just to kind of compare the two. But I also wanted to read this not only because of that, but because Lynette from Books with Lynette is over on Instagram. She's so lovely. I promised her that I would read this book. It was one that she recommended to me after I read R.I.P. She was my moral support while I was reading that book and we just kind of chatted throughout that whole experience. This was definitely one that she really highly recommended from Charity B's backlist. So that is book number three. Another favorite from last year, we have Hush by Liza James. So this is the second book that takes place in the same world as Vibe, but does follow different characters. It's dark sapphic romance. And I think these characters we've already met, I think one or and or both of them, I honestly don't remember, <laughs> work at the club with Ruby. The synopsis honestly is like, like a perfume commercial of a description. It's just, it's a lot of stuff and also nothing. What I'm gathering is Kay is kind of used to doing her own thing. Like she's a bit of a lone wolf. She keeps to herself, but she really is enraptured by Calypso. Really curious about her. Calypso, on the other hand though, she's got a really traumatic past and Kay seems to be reminding her of it for some reason. So there's like also a revenge plot line, it sounds like. I love Liza James' dark sapphic romance they just hit because they are that level of unhinged that I just love and I feel like Liza James just has a way of writing these characters that have such a intense and powerful connection that I feel like it has its own atmosphere and it's just so unique that Definitely got to read more from her. And this is the one out of her entire backlist that I really want to prioritize. Next up, I have Blood of, I'm going to butcher this, Desiderium? by Ali Stubley. This is the first in the Divided series. It's a high fantasy romance. It's got fae, dragons, and mental health themes. This takes place in a land that starts with a D. Gem, diadrum. Where fae all have power except for Princess Emma. So I can't tell based on the synopsis if she is not allowed to have power or just doesn't have power or what it is, but regardless, girlfriend doesn't have any power and she's kind of kept captive by her father as a result so she is trying to escape. In the process of all this she ends up discovering a secret and it says she has to deal with a nasty betrothal, a vigilante that's teasing her, a dark prince who doesn't trust her, and a phantom that invades her dreams. So I'm really curious is this all one person? Is this multiple people? It sounds like Emma knows how to play the game which is something that I love in a fantasy heroine. The reason that I'm prioritizing this one is I do really want to get back into some high fantasy -ness sounds like it's going to be a little bit darker so I'm like maybe that will kind of connect with what I'm reading a little bit more now and this was one that I got on Stuff Your Kindle Day but it had been on my radar before then and I really wish I could credit the creator that talked about this over on Instagram because they really sold me on this book and I literally cannot find who it was and it just seems like one of those that I'm like I bet you this is just wildly underrated. So next up I have Bricks by Brooke O'Brien that's too many bees. The first in the Rebel Havoc series. So this is a new adult it's got a step-sibling romance and it's a little bit of a bully romance. Hold on is it Bricks a unit of measurement in like winemaking? Did I just make that up? It's like something with like sugar or alcohol potential or dissolving it into liquid, something like that. Also, it kind of does sound like a Southern millennial mother named 
this child. Anyways, this is kind of a typical step-sibling romance. There's not a ton to talk about here, but basically, Rix is the bully. He's arrogant. He's spoiled. He's also the lead singer of a band called Rebel Havoc, hence the series title, and he's kind of used to women fawning over him, except for our girl. She doesn't. She's not like other girls, but also he was kind of a massive jerk to her, so it seems a little bit justified. Yeah, so she's just trying to avoid him, and then they find out that their parents are married, and then they're stuck together in a house. So, sounds like fun. I love step-sibling romances. I think they're really entertaining because there's so much forced proximity. And this has been on my TBR for over two years. It kind of gives me like Ashley Jade vibes a little bit and I love her stuff. So just looking for some unhinged goodness with this one. Next up, I have one that I've mentioned a couple times. It's been on a couple TBRs. I am going to read it this year though. And that is Don't Leave Me by Eden Emery. And this is part of the Club Petal, Petal series, but it's a dark sapphic romance. I've heard it leans a little onto the toxic side. It's second chance, it's forced proximity, it's stepsister, and I've heard it's got some suspense. Once again, this is about as specific as a 90s horoscope. So from what I can gather, Sloane is kind of hiding some secrets. She puts on a facade, like everything's fine, comes across very confident, and she's just trying to keep everything normal, keep her secrets from getting out. The only problem is though, that she always told her sister Lillian everything. Uh, they are reuniting after 12 years and Sloane has been pining, pining for her for years. Uh, so it sounds like they're supposed to be pretty isolated with this book, like maybe in one or both of the timelines. Lots of forced proximity, some good tension. This is one of those books that I just haven't been able to escape being recommended. <laughs> My friends recommend it to me. They have loved this book. It keeps getting recommended to me on Goodreads, so I know it's definitely one that I'm gonna like. Next up, I have Ecstasy by KV Rose, and this is the first in a series. It's a dark new adult, I think it's menage. Why choose or love triangle? Unclear, but there are three people mentioned in the synopsis. So we have Zara, Eli, and Alex. <laughs> they are all attending Haven University and they're kind of sick of lives. Uh, sick of lives. They are kind of all sick of their lives. Um, so this sounds melancholy as fuck. But Zara has a substance problem. Eli is a star athlete, but he's kind of got like some secrets, don't they all? And Alex, it just says he's a fucking asshole. So he sounds charming. But their worlds all collide at a party and it's drama, drugs, and destruction. All the Ds I want. Oh, no. I didn't like that. Moving on. I loved KB's writing in The Monster at Ho of Hotel Number 7. It's just dark, unhinged, and she's just, her writing is really beautiful, and she just has these really poetic, like, one-liners where you're just like, oh, anyway, I really want to read this one. I want to read a lot of stuff from KB Rose, but between this one and Unorthodox, I'm just like, I need to read more from her. Next up, we have The Five by Lily White. Oh, no. Hold it up, girl. This is a dark, I think it's romantic suspense more so. So, vague description. But from what I can tell, Rainy lives kind of a debaucherous lifestyle. She lives life on the edge. She's kind of used to men falling all over her. She's kind of like sex, drugs, and manipulation is kind of her lifestyle. So she's got a lot of secrets as a result. So it sounds like something ends up happening. There's an investigation and Rainy ends up with Justin Redding, a psychologist assigned to her case. What case? A murder perhaps? There's a murder that's apparently happened in the synopsis, so that's what I'm going with. But it kind of seems like murder and death are just kind of following Rainy. So the synopsis, I was like grabbing bits and pieces and it felt like I was trying to grab sand and make some semblance of a synopsis for myself, but that's kind of vaguely what this is about. So everyone that I have talked to that has read this book is like, it's wild, it's intense, it's not what you're expecting. And I really love the psychological component that Lily Wright always has as a part of her books. She's so good at kind of playing with the mental landscape. And I like the idea that we have a psychologist in the mix because she really does have that really great understanding that I know she is going to have some fun with that. And I have this really awesome special edition, so I can't wait to read it. Sorry, a storm just rolled in, so all of a sudden it just got really dark. Ooh, next up is a little bit more of like an old school, a classic, Comfort Food by Kitty Thomas. And this is a standalone and it's super, super short. I think it's like under 200 pages. It's a dark romance and has a capture captive element to it. This is about Emily and she is taken captive and conditioned. And the main tactic that they use is actually not violent, but kind of isolating her and really limiting her human contact. So she's basically touch starved. Everyone in 2020, am I right? 
I'm just kind of realizing that maybe my interest in Captured Captive cropped up because I'm trying to process what happened in 2020. Thoughts from a therapist. Anyway, so again, what I said, he's not violent. So this kind of messes with her head and keeps her on the brink of sanity. So I think this is going to be a fun dynamic to play with from just kind of a psychological perspective. But I wanted to get to this one because it's a little bit older and I really wanted to see kind of like the origins more so of the, these types of tropes. I know this was kind of one that was earlier to the game and it's a captor captive that people still talk about as being quite good. So I just wanted to give it a shot, see what it's like. It's a, I think almost like 13 or 14 years old now. Next up I have Blair and this is by Anita Gray and this is the first in the dark romance series. It is, as the series suggests, a dark romance and this also has a capture captive situation. So it sounds like our gal, I'm going to hazard a guess her name is Blair because it actually doesn't say it in the synopsis, but we're gonna go with Blair. She was kidnapped over 10 years ago and has been raised kind of in this like criminal underworld. There's little conditions and she has a very ruthless captor named Maxim. The goal for her is really to just like fawn over him, keep him happy, never say no, or really risk being very severely punished. She's been living this way for a while and that is until Charlie enters her life. And it sounds like maybe he re-entered her life in some way or might be an enemy of Maxim. He ends up taking her for three months as payment for a debt. He is determined to change her during that time. So I thought this was really interesting because it's a captor captive situation within a captor captive situation. It also has a deadline on it. So it just sounds like it's got a little bit of a different dynamic at play. And I'm kind of curious too about like what the conflicting conditioning might mean for the psychological landscape of our character. So it's really raining now and my lighting is looking very wonky. So apologies, folks. Next up, we have Fairydale and this is by Veronica Lancet. And this is a standalone. So it's a historical gothic romance. It's got some horror and fantasy elements. This is set in 1955. And our main character here is Miss Darcy O'Sullivan. And she is an English teacher who is living in Boston. Now she thought she was an orphan, but she learns that she's actually been included in her late biological father's will. Only condition of her inheritance is that she must travel to Fairydale for her father's funeral. So she arrives in this small coastal town and she has some very strange vibes. There's lots of weird strangers, rumors, unexplained deaths, like something's a little off here. It's during this time that she meets Caleb Hale. Apparently his family is quite popular or famous or notorious in some way. He's really trying to push her to step outside of her comfort zone. Weirdly though, it's not Caleb that haunts her dreams. It's some other guy named Amon. He is a charming nobleman from two centuries past. So she's just trying to navigate this wild life she seems to have stumbled into. It's starting to make Darcy question her sanity and all the while some sort of ancient evil is emerging in Fairydale. So this premise kind of reminds me of the TV show Awake. Does anyone remember that? Where the guy had the car accident and after that he wakes up like when he goes to bed he goes into a different reality and in one his family survived and in one they didn't and, but he believes them both to be real. So it kind of reminded me of that. I like the idea of focusing more on a gothic romance and kind of like the spooky but also having some fantasy. I just want to try and change up the type of fantasy that I'm reading in hopes that I can get back into the genre and enjoy it again. And Cynthia also highly, highly recommended this one. She had a lot of good things to say, not only about this book, but also about Veronica Lancet in general. So definitely one I want to prioritize. Next up, I have Torment and this is by Dylan Page. So this is the first book in the Bleeding Heart series and it's a dark taboo age gap motorcycle club romance and I've heard that it also has a mental health rep in it. So sounds like our gal actually ends up growing up around an MC and doesn't really realize that's what they are and slowly the wool's kind of being pulled from her eyes. So these people that she was really close with that she thought were her uncles and her brothers and her family friends are actually these like not so great people. So she really wants to get out and just like strike out on her own so bad but there's one thing stopping her and it's the worst one of the bunch and his name is Shay who happens to also be her stepbrother 
and he is the fixer for this organization it sounds like and uh, he doesn't want to let her go. I didn't realize until <laughs> until very late last year that I had been mixing up this book and The Darkness Beyond the Daisies. I somehow had combined both of them in my head maybe because this has a daisy on the cover but I want to read both of them so I also just wanted to get back into some like motorcycle club mafia style stuff because I got away from that last year and I just I want to come back to it. It was my bread and butter before and I really miss it. Next up is one that honestly embarrasses me that I haven't read and that is Deliver by Pam Godwin. She has one of my favorite authors and this is one of my favorite tropes. It is the first in the Deliver series and it's a long series. It's nine books and you do have to read them in order. So it's a dark romance, captor captive. This is a little bit more of a trafficking spin. This is about an, a man that's actually been taken captive and his name is Josh and he's the star football player on his college team. Liv ends up luring him away and basically decides to break him is going to turn him into a performer of certain activities. You got it. Problem is he's not breaking <laughs> and actually he kind of sees something in Liv that maybe this whole situation isn't all it appears to be and maybe he's actually gonna end up breaking her. I just liked that this was a little bit of a different spin on Captor Captive. We've got the guy captive rather than the gal and it's Pam Godwin. She always does such a good job with everything. She's she's an author I love. I love her everything she does. I feel like I'm a little nervous because I built this one up so much in my mind, but I am determined. I'm going to read this. Maybe I'll binge the whole series. That'd be kind of fun. Next up, we have My Life in Shambles, and this is by Karina Halley, and this is a standalone. It's more of like an emotional contemporary romance, and it's got a rugby player and some fake dating. Valerie kind of like hits the skids in her life, and she decides that because like everything's kind of gone off the rails, like she lost her job, her apartment, her fiance, everything. She's like, I just want to say yes to more things and just like kind of free up my life a little bit. This is how she ends up in Ireland for New Year's, and she meets now. There is conflicting information on the internet about how to say this man's name. When I looked it up, there are two different ways, and I'm going with Podrick because I've heard that this is the Irish version of Patrick, and that sounds closest, so don't come for me. I don't think any of you would have corrected me anyway, so it's fine. Irish Patrick here, he is a top rugby player, and they end up having a fantastic New Year's together, and he was like, yeah, what if we kept this going? And he asks her to pretend to be his fiance or his ailing father and come back to his hometown. I believe it's called Shambles, hence the name, My Life in Shambles. But things get messy pretty quick because fake things always do. I want to read this because one, I was a, I used to play rugby, so I love anything that's got rugby in it. I also love Ireland. I visited there, so I have like an idea of like what this town looks like in my mind's eye. And I think I just need something more emotional, kind of break up some of the darker stuff that I tend to read. Next up, I have Unrequited, and this is by Saffron A. Kent. This is a standalone. This is a new adult contemporary romance. It's got a student professor relationship. It sounds like Layla may have a habit of actually becoming infatuated and obsessed with people and potentially even stalking them. She She's who we're following. <laughs> And she's ready to move on. But unfortunately, she ends up seeing a very handsome professor around campus. And it turns out maybe she's not done with her old ways just yet. The only problem is not only is he a professor, he is also very married. I've heard that there's cheating in this. He's this kind of prickly, arrogant guy, thinks pretty highly of himself. He's a very pretentious, like, poetry professor, I believe. And it sounds like she just really goes after him. I wanted to read this. Uh, one, I just kind of like the idea of subverting the student-teacher trope, or the student's actually the one really pursuing him. I think that sounds interesting. I also like the idea that she's done this before, and maybe she's just a little off. Like, that just sounds a little fun. And because, like, I love an unhinged woman. So that's why that one's on the list. Just a couple more. So... Next up is For the Fans. This is by Nyla Kay, standalone MM, stepbrother sports romance. This is about Kieran, who is the golden boy. He's rich, he's popular, he plays football, and he's also a bit of a broody brat, and he's also pretty uptight. He is stepbrothers with Avi, who is the opposite. It sounds like he's a bit of like artistic, dreamer, stoner type of guy. They are kind of stuck together, sharing a house, school, bathroom. They're constantly in each other's business. Now, Avi's just trying to avoid Kieran because he's like, I just want to like get off to college, get away from this situation. But Kieran ends up in kind of a tricky financial situation and Avi has a plan to help him out. I'm pretty sure it involves doing Pam work. 
I want to read this one because Nyla Kay is kind of like the queen of taboo MM romances, but I've been a little bit intimidated by her books, mostly because they are like very unhinged and they sometimes have like some keeping it in the family and they also tend to be quite long. So I've just been a little bit unsure of where to start. This seems to be one of her most popular ones. It seems to be a lot less taboo than some of her others. So I feel like this is a good place to start, but I kind of got scared off by the length, but we're not doing that this year. So it's one I'm prioritizing. The next two are ones that I truly believe everyone has read except for me. First up, we have The Words by Ashley Jade. This is a standalone, but I think there's like spinoffs from this and it's a rock star, second chance, friends to enemies to lovers sort of situation. I'm gonna keep this brief since, like I said, I'm the last person to read it. Basically, it sounds like the main character, I think her name's Lennon. He's kind of a geek in high school, plus size, not many friends. He's super cool, but he's not good at school. And so she tutors him and then they somehow have a falling out. And then this follows them years later when he is like this famous rock star and she's kind of in a bit of a financial pickle, but he needs a sober coach because I think someone has passed in his life and he's just going off on vendors, but he keeps sleeping with all of his sober coaches. So they're like, who would never sleep with him? And they're like, I know this girl that really hates him. I want to read this because I love Ashley Jane. Her brand of dark romance just is exactly what I love. It just seems to hit every time, no matter how unhinged or how wild the book. I, I love it every time. So I've just been a bit scared about this one because it's less dark in terms of like violence and stuff like that. And it sounds like it's more dark in terms of like emotional. So I was like a little unsure of that. And once again, it's a big book, but we're not going to be scared of big books. So onward and upwards. All right, finally, <laughs> another one that I'm embarrassed that I haven't read <sighs> that I need to put my big girl panties on and, and just read. And it's Her Soul to Take by Haile LaRue. It's the first in the series. It's a paranormal new adult series. And <sighs> I really just need to read this. I've put this on so many TBRs, it's embarrassing. I'm gonna keep this super, super short. Once again, everyone's read this, except for me. Leon is basically a demon. It sounds like he gets summoned by a cult and they try and maybe send him after this gal uh, to kill Ray. So he's stalking her. She has a supernatural YouTube channel. I think she's like a ghost hunter type of gal. And she realizes Leon is after her. And somehow these two fall in love. So. <laughs> Obviously, I keep pushing that one off because I think I'm going to read it during spooky season and then I don't do it. I just need to make an effort to read it. Harley LaRue is one of those authors that I just absolutely love, but I think I've kind of psyched myself out on this book where I'm very scared that I won't like it because I have heard that the heroine's like maybe a little bit annoying or a little bit stupid, but like, look, I loved Jessica and she was a little bit of a bimbo at the beginning. So like maybe it's a great character arc. I don't know. With all of that, those are the 19, not 24, books that I am prioritizing in the year 2024. Um, so let me know, what are you prioritizing? I'm really curious. It'll probably be stuff I want to add to my TBR. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I really hope that I see you at my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>